The case of another unarmed black man, Jacob Blake, who was shot in the back by officers in Kenosha, Wisconsin, was in the spotlight again today. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden went to Kenosha. He met Blake's family and went to a community gathering to address the recent civil unrest. Biden says that unrest is not entirely President Trump's fault, but that Trump has legitimized a dark side of human nature. Jackson Prosco reports. Today, it was Joe Biden's turn to visit Kenosha, where he met privately with the family of Jacob Blake, the Wisconsin man shot seven times in the back by police. Blake joined by phone from his hospital bed. He talked about how nothing was going to defeat him, how whether he walked again or not, he was not going to give up. Later, at a public meeting, the former vice president pushed a message of healing and unity. You have to take responsibility if you're a leader, a president. Two days ago, the current president visited the city without acknowledging the reasons for a wave of protests that at times have turned violent. The fact is that we've seen tremendous violence and uh, we will put it out very, very quickly if given the chance. Polls show Americans trust Biden more than Trump to tackle issues of policing and criminal justice. The former VP is also well ahead with likely voters in Wisconsin and elsewhere. Up eight points here, nine points in Arizona, and four points in North Carolina. Send it in early. Where on Wednesday, Trump suggested his supporters should think about voting twice, by mail and in person. You send them in, but you go to vote. And if they haven't counted it, you can vote. So that's the way I view it. Voting twice is illegal. But it's part of Trump's strategy to sow doubt about the validity of an election that may come down to the wire. A survey of major polls found that on average, Biden is 7.3 percent ahead of Trump nationally, far ahead of where Hillary Clinton was at this point in 2016. Generally speaking, Biden is also leading in enough states to get over 270 electoral votes. So the person who needs the race to change really is Trump. It seems the Republican and Democratic conventions barely move the needle for either candidate. Opinions are already baked in. With few left to win over, it seems this election will simply come down to who turns out to vote. Jackson, absolutely nothing is certain in this election. What factors might be working in Trump's favor? Well, he's got the Electoral College in his corner, Donna, and that means he could actually lose the popular vote by a wider margin than he did to Hillary Clinton back in 2016 and still keep the presidency all if he manages to flip and hold on to the right states. All right, still a long time. Between now and November 3rd, Jackson and Washington, thanks. It's two months until the U.S. presidential election, and social media is playing a big role in how people get their information. We know that. Facebook said today it will not accept any new political ads in the week before the U.S. election. However, nothing changes before that. And in the week before voting, political ads already running on Facebook can still have their target audience adjusted. Lies are still acceptable, too. Facebook will not fact-check political ads. The company says it will remove posts with misinformation on voting policies and the COVID-19 pandemic. In a Facebook post, CEO Mark Zuckerberg said this election is not going to be business as usual and that it means helping people register and vote, clearing up confusion about how this election will work and taking steps to reduce the chances of violence and unrest. Facebook's restrictions on political ads will lift the day after the election.